This video is going to cover section 5.3, which looks at lines of credit. Lines of credit, we're still borrowing money that we've talked about in the first two sections of this chapter. We're still going to be using the compound interest formula, A equals P bracket 1 plus I bracket to the exponent N. But we're also going to be looking at transaction fees in this section as well. So with a line of credit, we could have transaction fees where we are borrowing just a little bit. With an overdraft, for instance, every time you make a transaction into your overdraft, there could be a fee associated with that. When we talk about a line of credit, we're talking about a flexible loan from a bank or financial institution. Flexible because we can use as much or as little of it as we require. Now, if you have a line of credit for $5,000, that means you could access $5,000. That means you could only access 200 if that's all you needed. And you only pay interest on the amount of money that you use. So a line of credit will charge interest as soon as money is borrowed If you borrow none or if you use none of that line of credit, you do not get charged interest. So this line of credit is an amount of money that you can access as needed and then rep repay immediately or over a specified amount of time. You don't necessarily have to pay it back all at once as well. You can pay it back slowly. Now the longer it takes you to pay it back, the more interest you are going to be charged because it's going to take you longer and you're owing that money. So it is a revolving credit source. Remember that revolving means that your balance can go up and down. If I have a line of credit and I use a thousand dollars, my balance is a thousand. If I pay back 500, my balance is 500. If I then use another 700, my balance is now 1,200. And my balance then can go up and down or revolve. So once again, interest on the line of credit is payable only on the used credit. So sometimes it's used for short periods of time. Interest is compounded daily and paid monthly. So we see that again where we calculate interest every day but we don't total it up until the end of the month. In the table here we see some information that are related to the different types of lines of credit. There's a personal line of credit. This can be secured by collateral. So that collateral, col uh, collateral issue again is something that's put up so that if you don't pay back, they can take and hopefully sell and get their money back. Or it can be unsecured. In both cases, there are no transaction fees, but there would be interest on the amount that you use. Revolving credit line, set limit. So you might have a $10,000 line of credit that can go up and down. Overdraft is usually less than 5,000, usually even smaller than that. What overdraft is used for is just small transactions. For example, my wife and I, we use overdraft just in case bills change and we go over by about 37 cents. In that case, if we go over by 37 cents and we're in the negative, then they'll charge us $35. And so we don't wanna get charged $35 just for going over by 37 cents. So we have overdrafts on the account just as an emergency measure. And home equity, this is equity in a home, so you can get a line of credit based on how much m equity you have. Remember, equity is the difference between the value of the, in this case, home, minus what is owed on the home. Again, a revolving credit line that increases with home equity. Example number one, Alicia has an interior decorating business. She has an overdraft line of credit. Each overdraft transaction costs $5 plus interest at 21% per year. 
On Tuesday, Alicia had three overdraft transactions for $83. She paid the back, she paid back the money in 10 days. How much did Alicia pay? So here first we need to figure out what the transaction total was for the costs. And we know each transaction is $5 and she had a total of three. So three times $5 each. Very straightforward calculation. Transaction costs $15 in total. We also need to figure out how much she paid in interest as well. So compound interest, we're compounding daily. So eventually we want to figure out A equals P plus I. We subtract P again and I equals A minus P. So we need to figure out the total amount, compound interest formula. A equals the principal was the $83 in transactions. One plus I equals 21% divided by 365 divided by 100. So I equals 0 0 0.0005753424658. And she's paying it back in 10 days, so N is 10. As we've done before, inside the brackets first, then the exponent, and then we multiply. So 83 times 1.000575342465.8 to the power of 10. A equals 83. Figuring out, so first we calculated what's in the brackets, then we calculate the exponent. And now we can multiply. So times 83 is 83.4787725. To calculate I, we're using this formula here. A, we have just calculated. We have to subtract the principal. So I equals A minus P. I equals 83.4787725 minus 83. I equals 0 0.4787725. So the total paid is the transaction cost plus the interest. So $15 for the transaction fees plus 0.4787725. The total paid is 15.4787725. The question was how much did Alicia pay? Alicia paid $15.48 in total. Two-part question then we had to figure out what the transaction costs were first. Three transactions, $5 each, total of 15. And then we had to use the compound interest formula to determine what the amount of interest was that was paid. Next example, Loretta wants to start a carpet cleaning business. She needs $4,000 line of credit to buy equipment. 
interest is 5.75% per year compounded daily. The chart shows Loretta's transactions for one year. We're just going to look at the chart here in Moodle. So the first transaction was $3,200, then $900, and then $1,450. So $32, $9, and $1,450. Now we can't just add them together, calculate the interest, because these were for different time frames. It was 98 days, 173 days, and then 67. So these were all days. And these three were all the amount. So we need to figure out the amount of interest on each of these. So once again, compounded daily I is 575 divided by 100 divided by 365. So I equals 0 0.00015753 4 and N is going to be the number of days for each of these transactions. So in the first case, the principal will be 3,200, N will be 98, and I will be that ugly decimal. Substituting our values into the formula. Once again, in the brackets first. Then the exponent. can multiply by 3200. So if we want to know the amount of interest on this transaction, once again, A equals P plus I. We know the total amount. We can subtract P. A minus P equals I. So here's our A value that we just calculated. And we're going to subtract P, which is 3,200. So I equals 49.782107. see we have that value. Now the other two we are just doing the same thing as in the first example except there'll be a change instead of 3200 it'll be 900 and the time frame will be 173. I stays the same the interest rate is still the same. And in the third situation this will change to 1450. And the time frame will be 67. So if you calculate your interest in those two situations, you should get 24.86 and so on, and 15.38 and so on for interest. So if we want to know the total interest that she had to pay, 
for all of the overdraft transactions, then we just need to total up the interest of each of the individual transactions. So adding them all up, we get a total of $90.03 in total interest on our line of credit. And you can see in the chart that we're just changing 3200 to 900 and 1450 and the exponent of 98 is changing to 173 and 67. Everything else is staying the same including the interest rate. So the compound interest formula is no different than we've seen in the past. What we are looking at here is transaction fees that are a little different and our time frame is in days as well. So we don't need to divide by 365 to calculate a time frame. If your time frame is already in days and you're compounding daily, then you can just leave n as the number of days.